I'm always amazed at how many great items I can find there at amazing prices. Hey there, if we haven't met yet, my name is Tiffany. I'm a Washington real estate agent who has a love for creating beautiful spaces on a budget. At the Goodwill Outlet or the Goodwill Bins, you pay for items by the pound. I'm always amazed at how many great items I can find there at amazing prices. Once we've wrapped up shopping, I'll show you what I did with any project pieces I picked up. I'll show you how I might style them. And as always, in the end, I'll share exactly how how much I spent. Thank you so much for joining me here. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Goodwill Outlet. As I had mentioned at this store, the majority of the items are priced per pound and every store is set up a little bit different. At our location, if something is over three pounds, they'll charge you a flat fee for that one item. So if you find something that is really heavy, don't shy away from it. Just ask and they very well may be willing to charge you a flat fee for it. I often find unusual items here, so I would love your help identifying some things. First was this bowl. As you can see, it had an unusual shape. So I was just curious if you guys happen to know what the intended use is for a bowl like this. Next was this trim. It's foam and it has a sticky backing and I just couldn't figure out what that might be used for. So if you guys know, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you to those of you who replied to a previous question of mine. Now I know that this is intended for serving breakfast in bed or an over the lap tray.
now I'm over in the furniture section where items are priced individually. My first find of the day was this glass vase. I loved the size and shape of this. The color was not really my style, so I'm gonna be switching up the look. notice that I frequently use chip brushes. There are a couple of reasons for that. First, I often am embracing a more rustic look, so I don't mind having brush strokes. Second, we buy them in bulk. We found quite a bit of savings buying them that way, so if you're interested in checking those out, I'll have them linked in the description box for you. Several months back, I picked up these two pieces and I'm gonna be using these to turn this vase into a multi-purpose piece. A few videos ago, I shared with you guys my frustration with the packaging on E6000. Several of you recommended that I try one of these hair dye keys and it has been wonderful. It has definitely solved my problem. So thank you so much to those of you who sent along your tips. Again, if you wanna go check this out, I'll have this linked for you. I really like E6000 as a glue. It's super strong, but it's pretty slow drying. For that reason, I really like to use it in combination with hot glue. I then repeated that same technique on this with the primer, chalk paint, and top coat. I really liked this garland. It did have a couple of spots that were a little sparse. What I've learned to do is pull off of the end and just fill in those spots and then cut off the end.
I found just one of these in the bins. I'm not sure if it's part of a seat back or possibly part of a stool, but I couldn't leave it behind. Here I decided to take some scrap wood and convert this into a little decorative bench. This is something I would set next to a freestanding tub for placing towels or other bath accessories on. When hanging items on walls, I like to make sure that there's some contrast between the wall color and the item. If I were to hang this on my walls, I would either lighten or darken it. If it were to go up against my white shiplap, I would use it just as is. This was originally a Halloween decoration, but I'm gonna be converting it into something that can be used year round for the home. find that lamps have gotten so expensive. So when I find nice lamps at the Goodwill outlet, I like to pick those up. And here I added a lampshade that I picked up at a different thrift store several months back for $3. When I spotted these, the first thing I noticed was the texture. have a specific spot in mind to hang these in my home. However, on their own, they just were a little too small. So I decided to attach them to this. You could definitely do the same thing if you found a larger thrifted item or if you happen to have something on hand, you can always paint it out and attach smaller items to it to create a more substantial piece.
here I'm using some water and vinegar to clean this. I then mixed up some paints that I had on hand and then created a little design on this to give it a fresh new look. Whenever I'm staining or painting or doing a wash on a basket, I like to first start on the bottom to just test it and make sure that I'm going to like the look. Once that paint had fully dried, I then topped it with some decorative glaze. Here I'm doing something I've never done before and that is flocking. I noticed that there were two main types, the type that comes out of a spray can and there was this powdered option. If you've tried the spray option, I'd love to hear your experience. I found this to be really easy to work with. You just want to be sure to protect your floors and then you spray the tree down and sprinkle the flocking on. Once it's been applied, you then spray it again and that locks it in place. I ended up having over half of that bag left. I'm sure I'll be using it again in the future and I feel like it's a really simple way to switch up your look or take something that may feel a little bit cheap and make it feel a little bit more upscale. And for the first time ever, I decided to put a Christmas tree in my laundry room. I figure, why not? 
here I took these foam snowball ornaments. I removed the hooks from them. I then took a needle and thread and created a little decorative garland. I was really happy with how it looked. However, it was not very strong. So I ended up redoing this with some elastic cord that's intended for jewelry making. And to create tassels for the ends of this, I just wrapped this around my hand multiple times, keeping track of how many times I was wrapping it around. I then made sure to leave some room at the top so I could easily attach it to my little garland. using some scrap floor underlayment. I've had a few of you ask, and this is the product that we use to create that faux shiplap look on our walls. Here I'm dry brushing some of that leftover paint from those baskets onto this box. I then sealed it in with this matte clear top coat. I found this cute design on Cricut Design Space, but when I went to transfer it over, I had a really hard time getting it to adhere to that transfer tape. I'm assuming that I probably just need a stronger transfer tape. If you have any tips or tricks for transferring small intricate designs over, please feel free to share. I ended up just removing that part and proceeding with just the lettering. I recently discovered this product. It's called Torch Paste. The way this works is once you have a stencil applied to a wood piece, you just dab on a little bit of that product and wait for it to dry. Once you've removed your stencil, you then take a heat gun and run it over that design. If you happen to have a heat press, you can use that to activate it. I was curious if I could use my iron. I didn't have success with that. So I ended up using my heat gun on low. After about 12 minutes of going over that, I decided to turn it up to high and then within a minute or two, it started to change color. If you've had your eye on a glow forge, but it's just not in the budget, it right now. I think this is a great budget friendly alternative.
we have been preparing for a Christmas gathering, so I thought this would be so cute to use for a little hot cocoa station. I did want to make sure that it was really good and clean. So here I used some alcohol, I then cut some wood pieces to line the bottom. And here I'm using those lids from that little Halloween decoration to create feet for it. With this, I just washed it up with soap and water and created a liner for it. And that's everything I picked up this date. Now, before we get to the grand total of how much I spent, if you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button? And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. My grand total before tax this day was $41.13. Just a reminder, I'll have all products shown in this video linked down in that description box for you. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, I'll also have a playlist linked for you. I hope that you're feeling encouraged that you too can create beautiful spaces on a budget. Thank you so much for joining me here. I will see you next time.